Well, this is the December 2015 episode of Arizona Mining Review, and we're filming at the Arizona Conference for the Society of Mining and Metallurgy Exploration, which is held every year at the Star Pass Resort uh, just west of downtown Tucson. And joining me is Niall Nemeth, who we usually talk to uh, by Skype or online. So Niall, it's, it's unusual we actually get and sit to, to talk to each other. I think this is maybe only the third time that we've got to do it face to face. <laughs> right. But um, we've got over 400 people registered for this meeting, down a little bit from last year, but some really interesting discussions and we're, we're talking to a lot of people here at this for an extended version of AMR today. But we just heard uh, Mary Poulton was the keynote speaker at lunch. And she was talking about corporate social responsibility worldwide at all, all kinds of corporations and comparing that with mining. And one of the things I think you and I both came away from, from her presentation with was um, that people are holding conflicting views quite comfortably. Quite comfortably, yeah, it was interesting. About point. mining. That they all want, I want. Well, mining and their consumerism. Yes. Does the me and the we conflict? There we go. The, so the problems yeah. of what you want versus what's maybe best or you think is best for your community. Right. I want rare earth to make my my cell phone and my smartphone and my big screen TV. I want metals for the battery in my electric car, but I don't want mining. Yeah, anywhere. not near you, not anywhere. It's it's right. the good and the bad conflict. Right. And so she. She had some interesting observations on how other major corporations deal with some of these conflicts in the sense that the mining industry really has not been able to make that jump to try to reconcile those kind of conflicting views that people have. True. However, she also made a, a really strong point about one particular photo that was from one of our major mining companies, Freeport, showing yes. that instead of having this, this sense of value being uh, growing the company, making money, producing more commodities, we're really about people, about the future, children, learning. Uh, she had a nice picture of the plants there. So that was, yeah. a, uh, she said, kind of the, the, the social message we had to send in the future. Right, she identified, what, six or eight major mining companies that she thought were really trying to address that issue in, a, in an effective manner and made the case that the whole industry needs to rethink how it presents itself to, uh, to society. Yeah, and she did a little bit of historical review of how uh, these uh, social responsibility policies have, have come out, yeah. how the reports have changed, how they're written, what, what they address. But uh, yeah, she pointed out that we still have a ways to go. Right. But it was, I think, a very positive sense that the, the industry has been working very aggressively on, on corporate social responsibility over the last few decades. And I think the history she put together of that was really quite impressive. But, but we were still left with that we were very comfortable Yes. as individuals having those conflicting values. Right, so there's a long way to go. Yeah, we haven't solved this yet. Well, and, and so one of the other things that came out is Kathy Arnold with uh, Hud Bay Minerals uh, at the morning session uh, was giving an update on, on the Rosemont project, said they have spent, or will have spent, a hundred million dollars getting that mine permitted. It's just an amazing figure. And over a 10-year period. So you can see the challenges when people are saying, yes, I want copper for all of my electronics and my car, my home, but I don't want mining. And so that's created this 10-year-long process, which is what most mines now take to get permitted anywhere in the country. Yeah, it's a typical time frame, unfortunately. Yeah. And we're not done yet. Right. We also heard, as the morning keynote speaker, it was Pat Marin from Hud Bay telling us that they want the permitting done right, but they don't know when that's going to get done. They're telling the agencies, take your time, get it right. Right. Yeah, because if you don't, then it's going to come back and haunt you somewhere down the road. That's right. Yeah. So, um, what's your sense of the optimism? You know, commodity prices are down, uh, lowest copper prices in like over six and a half years, but what's your sense of the, the audience here, the participants? You know, it's kind of mixed. I think people uh, know it's a boom and bust industry. A lot of them are used to taking on the challenge. I think there's perhaps a little more uh, negativism from some of the exploration geology folks, so they know that's not going to get pushed. But I've been sitting in on some of the metallurgical processing uh, sessions, and there people certainly are saying this is an opportunity to improve efficiency, cut costs, 
you know, extend maintenance periods, those sorts of things. So there's there's some you know win-wins in there. Okay. Well, we're going to be talking to a number of the, the folks here. Some of the people who are presenting talks. Some are here. That we've had a chance to get a, a really good uh, uh, portfolio of presentations for the rest of the show. I think it'll make for a very interesting program. I can't well, wait to watch it. Yes, <laughs> great. Underwriters of the Arizona Mining Review include Mining Foundation of the Southwest, a nonprofit organization based in Tucson, Arizona, working to educate the public about mineral resources and the mineral extraction and processing industries. Amigos, Southwest Buyer's Guide. For almost 40 years, Amigos has worked to provide a better business environment for mining. Pioneer Equipment Incorporated, serving the equipment needs of the mining industry since 1959. And Copper State Bolton Nut Company, in business since 1972 with 21 branches to serve you.